Okay, man, listen. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to grind lower Gythin. Before we get started, I just wanted to say it feels so good getting back into the swing of things playing BDO again. You guys have been showing me so much love, not only on YouTube, but also my Twitch streams. I just want to thank you guys so much for giving me the drive and the passion to get back into creating content. It's been a while, but I just want to say you guys make this so fun for me and thank you guys all for all the kind words on my YouTube videos and also all the love on my Twitch streams lately. If you want to catch me playing live, whether that's PvP on the Sork or grinding on Wusa, definitely catch me over at twitch.tv slash slushy. The link will be in the description down below. Today I will be teaching you guys how to grind lower Gyphon. Now I was going to make a Wusa guide, but I'm getting the hang of Wusa a little bit more, so that's going to be coming in the upcoming days. Today I just kind of wanted to talk about lower Gyphon as I have started to grind there. So let's go ahead and get started and let's get into it. So first things first, you want to make sure that you come down to Grana. If you put your marker on a Gyphon Rahai Temple, you will be able to find the lower Gyphon. It's also important to level up your node for a chance at better drops. So invest contribution into Southern Camisylvia, then invest contribution into Gyphon Temple, and make sure every day on all your characters you're investing energies to get your node to level 10. So once you actually get down here, you're gonna find this little doorway. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna come through the doorway and every day there will be an NPC in here that you will be able to grab some quests from. So you're gonna come up here and the first mod pack you're gonna see is right here. So you're gonna make a right through this doorway and you're gonna come through this doorway. You're gonna keep coming through here, another doorway, and then you will see the node manager here. And every day you will be able to get two quests to kill mobs for 30 Kafras. So make sure you do that every day. Now. All of the grind zones are pretty stationary. You're pretty much in one spot. So there's a grind zone here, there's one here. And then my favorite one is the one right through this archway on the left-hand side. There are some more grind zones back through there, but this is kind of like my spot right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the trash that I already got on the mount because I have been here for a couple hours already. Wanna make sure that you are always getting your villa buff make sure everything's repaired. And then I started out by using um, HP potions, but as I've grinded here a little bit more on my Wusa, it has gotten a little bit easier to where I don't really need those HP potions anymore. If you are grinding on Wusa and you'd like to know what my skill add-ons are, they are right here. So the biggest, uh, most important one for me is to be able to stay alive on Plume. I do have instantly, re re instantly recover HP per hit. This move also gives you 20 HP per hit, so I do need that because I do uh, lose quite a bit of health pretty often, so it's just nice to keep up your health using that skill. The other buffs that I use in my fairy, I always use Simple Cron Meal, Frenzies, and then right now I'm using Perfumes. Now these are just perfumes that I've gotten uh, through like Elixir boxes and stuff like that. They're too expensive for me to buy all the time, but if I have them laying around, I will use them to grind. The other buffs that you're gonna wanna use for here is definitely the church buffs, the AP buff, and also the protection buff. Now there is an event going on right now. If you have energy, you can go into your Black Spirit, go to exchange, and you are able to actually get 23% extra drop rate for two hours for 20 energy. So make sure you're using that throughout um, your grinding. There is also, if you go to the Y tab, there should be two little icons for blessing of breathing earth and also blessing of fragrant wind. These are going to give you buffs for five hours, so make sure you're popping this for your drop rate buff, um, as well as extra damage for monsters and damage reduction. Other than that, I'm running simple cron meal, villa buff, and everything else. Now with all that being said, it is recommended if you go to the item drop page and you go down to Gyphons, if we look here, lower guy fence, it's recommended 300 AP, 380 DP. Now I do have 371 DP, so I am below, but you should be good around 371. Now the whole way up to 400 even, 
it's really easy to die here, so you do need to stay protected, have some forward guard combos, but once you get the hang of it, it will become a lot easier for you. Now, I only have 289 AP, and I'm able to actually grind this pretty efficiently. I'm pulling around uh, 7,600 to 8K trash per hour, which is pretty good for where my AP is at. Now, this spot is going to give you a ton of Kafras, as well as high drop rates for um, not only um, Tungrad necklaces, but also Tungrad belts. So there's gonna be three mobs here, three statues. There's gonna be a purple one, a blue one, and a red one. Now, the purple one does hit the hardest. So when you get started here, you can kill any one of these right off the bat. So we're gonna go ahead and kill this red mob first. Now remember, back attacks is very important here. So as you can see, I'm staying behind the mob as much as I can because they do hit really, really hard. So as long as you're able to stay behind the mob, you will take the least amount of damage as possible, as well as being able to deal the most amount of damage. So whenever you kill one of these mobs for the first time, it is going to take a little bit more uh, damage than it normally would just because you don't have a buff. Now, as you can see, we killed the mob. Now, the statues will spawn randomly and the colors will change up. So as you can see, we got the um, Stalwart Warriors Resolve, which is the blue buff. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and kill the blue mob since we got the buff to kill the blue mob. Now, normally, um, if you get a buff, you want to go to the mob for the color that you got. If you go to a mob with the wrong color, you aren't going to deal as much damage. You also wanna make sure you don't aggro any of the other mobs when you're supposed to kill a certain color. So if I were to aggro this red mob uh, and I pulled him over to the purple mob, he would actually join together with the purple mob and become enraged and that is when you get one shot and it forms a really big um, aggroed mob that hurts a lot. So make sure whenever you do kill a certain mob, you go into the next color. So right here we got red. We don't wanna aggro the blue or the purple. We just wanna focus on the red mob. So right here, we're gonna do our damage. Make sure we're staying behind the mob. Keeping our HP up. And like that, we killed the red mob and we can go over to the blue mob now. So we're gonna get started on this blue mob. We're gonna make sure that we're doing damage from behind the mob. Just gonna do a little spin attack, so we're gonna get behind him, keep da damaging him from the back. And we are good to go. Next, we have the purple mob. So this is the mob that does hit the hardest, so you wanna make sure that you are staying behind her as much as possible. She also has a lot of red AoEs that she will place on the ground, so you wanna make sure that you are standing outside of the red AoEs as they do hit you pretty hard. So there we go. And then here we have an event spawning. So this event spawns pretty often once you get the node leveled up. It is called a butcher. And the butcher is going to spawn over here on this side. Make sure that when the butcher spawns, you come up here and you focus the butcher. The butcher does have a decent amount of health, but killing the butcher actually gives you a really nice buff that allows you to kill everything really fast. And as you can see, there's gonna be a lot of mobs that spawn after the butcher. So right here, I got hit pretty hard. So I wanna make sure that I'm keeping my frontals up and then I'm gonna use the skill that I have HP on. So you wanna make sure that you're staying out of all of these AOEs. The purple AOE will one-shot you. So let me go ahead and get my health back. And right now we wanna kill the Flamin first. It is the one that has the purple icon above her head, which is this one right here. She is the one that spawns that purple AOE that will one-shot you. The red ones will also do a lot of damage, but as you can see, you can kill the mobs really quickly. So make sure whenever the butcher spawns, you are going and killing the flaming first, then uh, go ahead and kill the other mobs. Now you do get this yellow buff that allows you to kill everything pretty quickly. So as you can see, I'm able to actually kill all these mobs really, really fast. So all the mobs are now dead. And now we got the red buff and we can go back to killing the red boss. And it will just keep cycling like that. You'll get the red buff, you'll get the blue buff, and you'll get the purple buff. Depending on what buff you get, you're gonna wanna go up to that mob. And every once in a while, you will get a butcher that spawns. There is another event that spawns here, and it will say that the mobs have fallen into despair. 
a mob will spawn like a green mob that will say despair on top of it you can go ahead and just leave her alone unless she walks up to you while you're uh, fighting a mob you can go ahead and kill her basically what she does is she just spawns extra little mobs that are called despairs now those will basically just give you extra trash you don't have to worry about killing her unless she does walk up to you because she doesn't get enraged or anything like that so you can kind of just leave her be but other than that uh, Gyphon is going to be a really really good spot early on um, when not early on in the sense of like early on when you first start the game but when you start to get to that end game zone I'd say that this is going to be better than red orcs um, definitely better than jade forest um, this is just one of those spots that's going to be really fun early on because you are going to get a lot of jewelry jobs and a lot of kafras and kafras are really really important when you first start you know getting to end game and getting that defense pushed up and getting kafras is really really important um, so make sure that you are grinding here and then this is going to be pretty much where you're going to live until you get to the gear where you're able to grind um hex hex i'd say you probably want around you know 301 to 305 ap with a lot of accuracy because you do need accuracy for those mobs but until then you're pretty much just going to be living at underground gyphon now, when you do get your um, Agris every day and your Agris coins, I don't recommend using them here. I recommend getting a group and going and grinding Upper Gyphon because with Upper Gyphon, you're gonna be making around a bill an hour with your Agris buff. So definitely make sure you're saving your Agris for Upper Gyphon. But other than that, you should be good here at Lower Gyphon. Make sure you're just following the mod colors as well. Um, now, it will be kind of scary when you first grind here. You probably will die a lot, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes really, really simple. But definitely make sure you are paying attention here. This is not a grind spot where you can just kind of go and just like not think about it. You have to make sure that you're hitting the right colors. You also have to make sure that you're constantly moving out of the mobs AOEs and their hits or else you will get one to two shot here, depending on the attacks that are coming towards you. Other than that, it should be pretty easy for you to get the hang of this spot. Remember, whenever this butcher spawns, you come up here and you kill him, and then you focus the flame in right away. So we're gonna go ahead and kill this butcher. Just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and look for the flame in here. And she is, actually can't see her right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and kind of hit everything with our big AOE and just pray for the best. So right there, we got hit really hard. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Wusa skill that gives you health back. We were actually able to stay alive. But like I said, if you don't kill that flame in first, she is gonna hit you really, really hard. So just make sure you do get her down. But as you can see, we are good to go. I hope that this guide was able to teach you how to grind lower Gyphon. Like I said, it is really, really scary here, but once you get the hang of it, you do make really, really good money. Uh, you should make anywhere between like five to 800 mil here an hour, depending on your gear and also your drop rates. You get a lot of uh, Kaffirs here, which is gonna be really nice. Um, in like two and a half hours here with the quest as well, I've already gotten around 150 Kaffirs. And the trash dude's pretty nice, 25,000 per trash. And you get a lot of black stones and dust as well. You can also get Krog Dollar Stones, which is around 50 mil per drop. So I hope you guys were able to learn something from this. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And also, uh, definitely let me know what you wanna see next. The Wusa Guide will probably be my next video. So until then, thank you guys and peace.